thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. I'll start off with our first slide. This is a sunrise over the island of Santorini. Santorini is uh, just an incredibly beautiful island in the Mediterranean. And other than being my favorite place in the world, I think, um, the sunrise I, is kind of a cheesy way to signify uh, the dawning of a new era. And I hope that by the end of this presentation, I will have convinced you of that. All right. I'm on staff at Nova Southeastern in uh, uh, Lauderdale, Miami area. And there's our necessary disclaimers. Uh, that includes uh, the catheters that we use and so on. The purpose of stem cell research and or clinical application is to develop and bring to clinical practice novel stem cell treatments. What stem cells can do? Regeneration of tissues and organs, repair of defective cell types, and delivery of genetic therapies and chemotherapeutic agents into desired tissues. So that's me reading off the slide, and as we get into it, you'll see where it really comes uh, to play. Being in Las Vegas, I felt that it would be inappropriate not to uh, mention the CSI TV show that's so hugely popular, and to some extent um, model my presentation today after a typical episode of CSI. So this will be SCSI Las Vegas, with the S standing for Stem Cell Scene Investigation, and we'll be looking at uh, three totally, on the surface, unrelated uh, events or issues in, in uh, in the world, and then see if we can somehow interlace them together. The first has to do with NASA. Second is transspecies transplants. And the third is where I spend a whole lot of my time in the cardiac cath lab. So by the end of this, hopefully, we'll have learned something and also had uh, maybe some fun along the way. All right. Treatable diseases. Diseases currently that my team or myself are, are presently treating patients with with uh, high degree of success, low risk rates, um, reproducibility, uh, objective data. Cardiac disease, we're treating uh, dilated and ischemic cardiomyopathy as well as angina pectoris. We're treating uh, peripheral vascular disease in the form of critical limb ischemia, renal insufficiency, pulmonary disease, including COPD, pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary fibrosis, early senile dementia, and metabolic diseases, believe it or not. Uh, when I was in Dubai, and I did a, a talk there for, I guess, the equivalent of the A4M, uh, I was able to release data on a patient with Fabry disease. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Fabry disease. I hadn't seen a case since I was in medical school, and I had a cardiomyopathy patient that came to the office, and we were actually able to almost double his ejection fraction with the stem cells uh, and take him off the, tr uh, the cardiac transplant list. So, again, metabolic diseases are treated, uh, can be treated with stem cells. All right. <clears throat> I had a patient that uh, I saw a couple of weeks ago, and when I asked him what it was that he was interested in getting out of stem cell therapy or treatment for his cardiomyopathy, and not only did he mention his heart, but he also mentioned monkey glands. And I hadn't ever been exposed to the term monkey glands. I didn't really know what it, they were. Uh, he had a, a British accent or a... I guess spoke in, uh, in, a, in a British uh, way. And I had a friend who's Canadian who also had a bit of a British accent. And assuming, like most Americans, that everybody that has a British accent must know each other, I asked him if he knew anything about monkey glands. And interestingly enough, we are correct. All people with British accents seem to know each other and have something in common. His uncle was one of the doctors in Canada that actually did transplants of monkey glands into humans. This was something that was extremely Oops, wrong button, sorry. It was extremely popular uh, in the 20th century, 1920s, 1930s. Dr. Serge Voronoff was a Russian-born transplant surgeon that trained in Paris. He spent a lot of time in Egypt. I'm not sure what he, whether he was looking at the pyramids or the locals, but apparently he was spending a lot of time looking at the eunuchs. And he found that eunuchs tended to age much quicker than non-castrated individuals. And this fascinated him. So he started doing experiments on animals, and he found that the animals tended to do very well if you were to transplant uh, younger testes into older animals. So he developed uh, a process. It first started off with convicted criminals, 
and then it went on to animals, but he would do xenotransplants. He would actually take testicular uh, material, slivers from uh, primates, and sew them into the testes of humans. And apparently he was having some very good results with it. And at one point, uh, the International College of Surgeons in London gave him a standing ovation for his work. When he started making a lot of money with it, uh, traditional medicine decided that this must be bogus and was convinced that it couldn't possibly take place and it was a placebo effect. And at the time of his death, he wasn't recognized for much of anything. So I was fascinated about the monkey glands. I went to the epitome of medical uh, research and information. I Googled it and was able to come up with a lot of this information. So let's move on to uh, more about the stem cells. What do we do in the lab with these patients? All right, the stem cells are sources, embryonic, not currently being used in most of the world. Uh, a lot of um, people mistake embryonic for fetal stem cells. Remember, embryonic are cells that come from fertilization clinics and are currently, uh, only several lines have been approved in the U.S. by the current administration. That may change. However, we haven't been able to effectively treat anybody with embryonic cells. The side effects tend to outweigh any of the benefits. And that has a lot to do with the technology to be able to contain the embryonic cells. What do we use? I guess I have to hold this a little bit higher. Non-embryonic. Fetal stem cells that come from aborted fetuses. Cord and placenta cells. I've saved the uh, stem cells from my youngest in, uh, child. And I believe that in the future, we will all have our stem cells somewhere banked so that we can use them in the time of a crisis, at least the cord cells. I know that there are some companies out there storing uh, stem cells now uh, for individuals, and uh, that seems to be a growing uh, practice. And then there's what I like to call adult stem cells, even though all of these are really adult. Uh, is the stem cells that come from our own uh, circulating blood, bone marrow, fat, and other organs. All our tissues tend to have resident stem cells.